headphones turned on usually work best. Hi, I'm Christopher Westfall. Thanks for joining me today. I want to tell you about a program that's proposed was actually supposed to have been started by now, but it's on a temporary pause, a temporary hiatus with the new administration while they review it for last minute uh, challenges with it. And then they're going to bring it, I believe, to a city near you. And I'll tell you exactly where and what this program is. And I want to encourage you, stay till the end. I found something that saved me, I think it was $40 last week on just buying gas, spending money like I would do any other time. I want to share it with you because we always try to find ways to save people money. And this is a, a free, completely free thing that just gives you money back. And I want to share it with you in case uh, you do any driving out there. People are starting to hit the roads again, which is a wonderful thing. So stick around for that. And then I want to tell you about this. Um, let's see if I can get this program started. I call this the quiet program. This is something that was proposed with CMS, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, to take effect um, this year. Um, and it's kind of a sneaky program. And only a few people were talking about it. Literally no one in the mainstream media has picked up on this program. And it's in a temporary pause right now, but I want to share with you why I believe it's a, a negative thing and how it could affect you or somebody that you know. Um, it was covered in this small website called the Center for Health Journalism. And they said the latest under the radar program could push Medicare deeper into private hands. And by private hands, you know, Medicare has been a program around since the 1960s. It's a government program. And it's actually the best thing that the government has done right. It's one of the only things that it has done right. And so for many years now, almost since its inception, they've been trying to make Medicare a private program because there's a lot of money to be made with Medicare, as we'll talk about. And this report says one of the most significant changes to the way Medicare beneficiaries receive health care since managed care was introduced in the 70s, this program is, adding that the model was raising critical questions, particularly among beneficiary groups, that's the seniors. The proposed change has generated almost no media coverage, although it would upend the health insurance for millions of Americans. This is quite interesting. Now, I had a lot of comments since the last video. Some people saying that I took too long to get to the, the information. Other people said that I talked too fast. So I'm going to try to do slower talking. There's a couple of slides I need to show you some details on. Don't get lost in the weeds, I promise you, and we'll take a break right in the middle. But this is important because I do believe this is coming to a person near you, if not you yourself. So this is called the graph, uh, Geographic Direct Contracting Model, or GDC. And you'll see a lot of acronyms as we go through this, and I'll help you with the program. But I've made some highlights of the parts that are important to you. And I think it's important as they're proposing here literally to take your original Medicare away and put it into private hands. Because let's face it, what's really been happening is, yes, 30 something percent of seniors when they're turning 65 and eligible for Medicare for the first time are opting into managed care. So 30 something percent are signing up for Medicare Advantage plans. That's where you put your red, white and blue card on the shelf, you cannot use its benefits while you're on the private plan. And while you're on the private plan, notice Medicare Advantage, you have to do everything by the rules of that plan. Now, a Medicare Advantage salesperson will tell you that they have to cover every category that original Medicare does. That's true, but it's only half the story. You see, they have to cover categories that Medicare covers. They don't have to cover it to the same extent that Medicare would. And there are a couple of things that are unique in Medicare Advantage that are part of this program they kind of snuck this in as a hybrid model between original Medicare that you earned and the private funds, which will actually benefit the private health companies. And so that's what we're going to get into. And this is called the geographic direct contracting model. And this model is to see if they can save money with Medicare. Anytime the government says that they want to save money, you have to be careful with that. Um, it was just the last budget reconciliation thing where they say, we're going to save money by finding out waste, fraud, and abuse, and it just never seems to happen. So these DCEs, that's the first acronym we'll be looking at, that's the direct contracting entity, are they're going to build integrated relationships with doctors. So these doctors are going to now, for the first time, as if they never have before, talk to each other, share information, and somehow at the end of the day, 
you are going to be healthier for it. But there's more to that. So let's see. It says in this, this is another part of the story. It said the privatization of traditional Medicare over time, turning it into another form of Medicare Advantage plans is what this is. Hmm. That's the Medicare Rights Center said that. The purported goal is to see whether these entities, which will become between, they'll come between doctors and their patients, will be able to reduce costs and improve quality. However, many government and independent analysis of Medicare Advantage plans show that people who need complex care tend to leave them in disproportionately higher rates. So on Medicare Advantage, it's great if you don't have anything major going on. Always has been. Absolutely wonderful. The problem comes in when you have something major, like a chronic condition or, most importantly, cancer. Now, we did a video recently. It was a live stream. Very popular. And thanks for attending. Really appreciate that. Where we talked about these cancer doctors are pointing to the fact that at age 65, brand new, eligible for Medicare, that's when the majority of people of any other age group are finding out that they have cancer. Why? Because they're brand new to Medicare and they're getting the cancer screening and they're getting the cancer treatment that they needed to have done. So that's the critical factor here is if you're deciding between Medicare supplement or original Medicare or a Medicare Advantage plan and you have something like cancer, it's a significant impact on you. And that's why it says here, many. this is from the Medicare Rights Center, a nonprofit organization, Government and independent analysis of Medicare Advantage plans show that people who need complex care tend to leave them. But there are similar, there's another quote, there are simil enough similarities between Medicare Advantage plans and this new program to raise real concerns. Three years ago, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services offer, Office of Inspector General, I don't know why I can't talk today, they talked about uh, this investigation that the IG's office did it was a two year long investigation where they said that 75% of the denials of care filed by beneficiaries. Now this is on Medicare advantage. This is a Medicare advantage phenomenon. 75% of the time that they denied care to people, those denials were overturned later by Medicare on appeal and payments should have been provided 75% of the times it's an automatic denial for care and this is important, and I'll tell you why, because it ties into this other program. The IG's office, the Inspector General's office, said that this was especially concerning because beneficiaries and providers rarely use the appeals process. So if you're a senior and you come down with cancer and they tell you that you have to go to one oncologist because he's the cheapest capitated person already within their network, not necessarily the best, not necessarily the, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America or MD Anderson, all those places that don't participate in your Medicare Advantage HMO, you have to go through their process. If you say, no, I want to go to this other guy, sorry, you can appeal their decision on that. But 75% of the time, you're going to get the denial and then nobody knows about the appeals process. I'll show you what the appeals process is and you can be uh, the deciding factor on that. As we get into that, please just take a minute and like this video because the information I'm about to deliver to you, you're not seeing it anywhere else. That I can guarantee. And when something changes with Medicare, you're going to see it here first and I don't want you to miss it. So if you can click the notification bell where it says always, look, even Fonzie's doing it, giving it a thumbs up. Would you do that for me? Thank you so much. It really helps the YouTube algorithm to help more people. So I did a little video a couple of years ago when this story first came out, go figure, came out in September, 2018. I did a video about it. The office of inspector general finds profit to blame. Imagine that profit to blame for denied Medicare advantage claims. And this is a very revealing study. And I really encourage you to go watch that video. I will link it in the replay. But here's the process that they want you to go through when they deny your care routinely. You have to go through one, two, three, four, five different layers of appeal. And you have to do it all within the right time frame or else you lose your opportunity for the appeal. So this is part of the Medicare Advantage world. And this is why this is so important because this new program is trying to take away your original Medicare and replace it with their program. And guess what? Here's the most important part. You can't say anything about it. 
You have no choice in it. And I'll show you in black and white. They're planning on taking your Medicare away in certain cities to try this program. And there's not a thing you can do about it. Stay tuned. So the, here's the, what the video looks like. If you want to go see the whole thing on the behind the scenes that nobody else is telling you what's going on on this Medicare Advantage situation, you can get there by going to this website down here, allaboutmedicareadvantage.com. And you'll find out all about it for sure. But look for this icon. And when you find that icon or this, um, what do you call it? Thumbnail, you'll see the investigation video that I'm talking about. So here are the cities where they've identified where they're going to launch this program. Atlanta, Dallas, Houston. Why so much representation in Texas, I wonder? Los Angeles, Miami, Orlando, Philadelphia, Phoenix, Arizona, San Diego, and Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Orlando, and Miami representing. Wow. So these are the programs where this test thing is going to be launched, right? And who's going to be included? They're looking for beneficiaries that must meet the following criteria, not already on a Medicare Advantage plan. Why would they need you on something that's managed by a managed care plan if you're already on one of them? They don't want those people. They want the people who have original Medicare as their primary payer. This is who they're coming from, okay? If you're already on a Medicare Advantage plan, don't want you. Maybe you want to wonder why. So here are some questions and answers from the CMS uh, webinar where they talked about this. And if you've ever attended a CMS webinar before, you really need to bring lots and lots of coffee to those events because they're very, very slow. Um, okay, so can a beneficiary still see any Medicare provider? You can, but there are benefits to the program if you go within their selected network. But it's not who you can see, it's what they can do to save money on you. So this is kind of a hybrid between original Medicare, because you don't have the network here, but the care that they decide that you get to have are going to have the same restrictions, prior authorization, referrals, and the like, that you would have if you were in original, in a, one of the Medicare Advantage plans private. So that's where they're coming for you to save money. Now, there's one really good benefit about this thing, and then there's always a silver lining, right? So these GODCEs, direct contracted entities are going to have some benefit enhancements. One of them, streamlined access to skilled nursing facilities through a waiver of Medicare's normal three-day skilled facility rule. So you have to spend three days in the hospital before you can go to a skilled nursing facility normally under original Medicare. If you don't have three days in the hospital or if they marked you as observation status only, it does not trigger Medicare to pay for you going into long-term rehab. So this program, as generous as it's going to be, they've already outlined, they will waive that. Now, I'm a part of an organization called the National Association of Health Underwriters. It's a national organization. And we have a lobbying firm that works with us. And we're trying very hard, have been trying for years now, to get this three-day rule thing eliminated, at least to start with eliminating this observation status thing, because most of the hospitals are putting you under observation status, but that doesn't count towards your being admitted. You have to be admitted for three days before this triggers. So this would be the one good thing from it. Home care visits, home care, telehealth. Whoa, wonderful. They're gonna have that as part of this. Well, we've already got telehealth and Medicare now. So here are five different people who will, five different categories of people who will be targeted for this program. This is interesting. So voluntarily, you can go in voluntarily, they'll announce it in your area, and you can sign up for one of these GODCEs. Here's why you wouldn't want to do that. I'll show you in a minute. Or for dual eligible people, that means they're eligible already for Medicaid and Medicare. There is a very lucrative industry in within Medicare, a niche within a niche, of targeting seniors who are both on Medicare and Medicaid. I'm making a lot of agents mad right now, but I'll tell you, it's a very highly profitable niche to be in as an agent. And I see it all. They go toward, um, these agents will go to your food line, the food banks, they'll go to low income property places and they'll hand out things and they'll volunteer and they'll do all these things for the sole purpose of trying to get these Medicaid, Medicare, dual eligible people to sign up for their Medicare Advantage plan. You know, all the rules that original Medicare, uh, Medicare Advantage has 
which means you can only sign up during your open enrollment when you're new to Medicare or during the annual enrollment period. That's the only two times you can sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan. Those are out the window when you're talking about these folks, the dual eligible. Their income is so low that they qualify for Medicaid and Medicare, and the insurance companies make a fortune when these folks sign up for their plan, their dual eligible plan. Then they come on to Medicare Advantage and they get all kinds of freebies and all kinds of things that are good for them. Uh, they get money to go into the pharmacy and they can buy extra things. These plans are going out of their way to give away more things, give away, give away, give away, to get the seniors that are on Medicaid as well into these programs. So they want those people to come into this new GODCE program. And then if they're already affiliated with an accountable care organization, they want them to come in, not gonna be many people. And then they can identify people based on the claims that they're already having. So how about this? How about Medicare notices that you're in Orlando, Florida, they don't have enough people participating and they want everybody that has diabetes to be in this study, let's say. That's something that they've identified through Medicare claims that this is a target audience that they really want some data from so they can pull you into this program. So here's number five, random alignment. Let's say that you did not align yourself and you're in this city and they don't have enough participants yet. You're not aligned yet to a GODCE, direct contracted ent entity to go through this program, which is a hybrid Medicare Advantage model. So they will go ahead and align you anyway. What does that mean? They're gonna randomly assign you to one of these programs once this program takes off. Now, once they've reached their cap of how many people they need in this test, they're done. But until that time, if you're in this area and you're in the geographic area that they want people, <clears throat> you're just pulled in. They're just going to take you. Now, the question is, can I get out? Can I say no? No, thank you, Uncle Sam. I want to keep my original Medicare. The answer is no. They say this is from CMS own website. Can a beneficiary opt out of alignment? Alignment. Don't you love these terms? Enrollment is the real term. Can they opt out of enrollment into this program, this hybrid program? No, you can't. Well, what do you mean I can't? Well, you're going to keep all your original Medicare benefits and rights while having the possibility of getting additional benefits and lower out-of-pocket costs. Again, when the government comes out and says they're going to save money on something, guard your pocket and be careful about what the details are. In this particular case, you can't opt out of it. And it's not this, this is the same old argument <clears throat> where if you're on Medicare Advantage, you have all the rights and remedies that you do under original Medicare. That is an absolute lie from the pit of hell. Sorry. <clears throat> it's not true. They get to decide what treatment course you get. And only that approved by the health plan is authorized. You can't then say, okay, well, you guys approved me for 10 chemotherapy treatments, but this other oncologist that I went to and paid out of my pocket for, because he's not in your network, <clears throat> he told me I need 20 or 30. If you go outside of what the plan is authorized for you, talking about managed care here, you pay for that 100% out of your pocket. Whereas, had you been on original Medicare with a Medicare supplement even, and you want to go to a different oncologist for a different, for a second opinion, and he says, you need to have this course of treatment. Guess what? Because he's a Medicare provider, it's paid for. No matter where you go as long as they accept original Medicare, which is just about everybody. The, so the, are they the, exactly the same? Are they on parity with each other? When the health plan says, well, we covered your cancer, you're done. Or Medicare says, yeah, you want to go to that doctor? Great. You want to go to that doctor? Great. Whatever they say goes. You want to go to a private cancer treatment center? Good. Medicare will pay them for it. Big, huge difference. But in this case right here, they're saying you have no say. You should just be happy. Why? Because you're going to maintain all your rights. Yeah, right to what? An appeal? Great. Okay. So who are these direct contracting entities? Now, this is supposed to be the government trying something new to save money. Who are these people that they're going to create out of thin air to do this? Hmm, we've already got original Medicare. We've got private doctors. And we've got Medicare Advantage plans. On Medicare Advantage plans, they already have experience with this. They already have experience 
with denials, prior authorizations, um, managing claims in the middle of the claim, telling you yes or no, you can go into the hospital or not. So you know what? As we're making this new test model here, let's just make sure that they comply with HIPAA. They're going to keep your information private. And let's go to the organizations that have a significant experience taking risk in value-based care models, including sophisticated accounting, accountable care organizations, health systems, healthcare provider groups, and here it is, health plans. Everywhere in the Medicare and You Guidebook, and this is another issue brought up by the Medicare Rights Center in a, a letter to Congress two years ago, where they said, wait a minute, this Medicare and You Guidebook, this guidebook from Medicare is vastly biased toward health plans. And anytime you hear Medicare talk about health plans, what they're really talking about is Medicare Advantage plans. They just call it health plans. And you see about this much talk about original Medicare and Medicare supplement and about this much talk about how great Medicare Advantage plans are. So when they're talking here about health plans, that's their terminology for Medicare Advantage. So we anticipate some applications might include innovative partnerships between health plans and healthcare providers. Health plan, health plan, health plan. So how are you going to save money in these programs? What's it all about? How do you save money? I know how you save money. You restrict and deny care. Oh, Chris is stepping into it now. Here it is right here in black and white. This is from the webinar run by CMS that everybody else was asleep in and I was still paying attention. It says right here, for GEO preferred providers, direct contracting entities may implement a range of program integrity tools. How do you like that terminology? It's not a denial of care. It's a program integrity tool meant to save the government money. That's what the whole thing's about right here, supposedly, right? So these tools include things like prior authorization. Have you seen what the American Medical Association has to say about this prior authorization? What happened in the Trump administration with prior authorization? What did the Biden administration do about that? I'm going to tell you in just a minute, and you'll probably be blown away. So this is one of the programs they can do to save money, prior authorization. Okay, what's the other one? Oh, we'll have concurrent review. That means reviewing your claim while you're in the middle of it. You may be sitting in the hospital right now, and they're going to say, oh, you know what? We really don't want you to be admitted. You, you can just probably go home. You only need 48 hours in the hospital. Now you can go home. Do you know anybody who's had those calls with Medicare Advantage? I do. That's called concurrent review. And prepayment claim edits. Before they pay the claim, they're going to do a little bit of investigating. Prepayment and postpayment medical and payment review. Just going to review it. So long as such tools are referenced in the agreement and entered into between the direct contracting entity and the provider. So the organization and the provider are going to get together and see how much they can save money on your care. Again, do you have the choice to get out of that program? No, you don't. If you're picked for it, it's one of those tag, you're it. And Let's see. CMS expects details on how they can apply program integrity tools for non-preferred providers to be included as well. So they have preferred providers, which they're going to pay capitation to, 7% of the savings, but it's detailed. But then they have non-preferred providers as well. Because remember, as part of this test program, my wife just told me I'm too hyper. As part of this test program, you can still go to out of network providers because there is no network. So they're still using original Medicare, but they're trying in this hybrid model here to use Medicare Advantage type restrictions on care with an open network situation like original Medicare has. So what to do for the non-network providers that has still yet to be ironed out. I really encourage you to watch this video on prior authorization. It has clips from the American Medical Association, from cancer doctors, from um, nephrologists, from all kinds of different specialties where the doctors are talking about this huge burden of prior authorization. Before the doctors can even treat you, they have to get permission. Before you can go in the hospital, they have to get permission. And it's not simple. They have to fax a form to the health plan and wait 
literally facts, which is invented about a hundred years ago. And according to this, it says the study, 24%, 24% of 1000 physicians surveyed said that waiting on prior authorization has led to serious adverse events for patients. It's only a quarter of patients that have had this happen, right? Serious adverse event while waiting for the health plan to say it's authorized. That's what's going to be in this model that's not optional. 16% of those doctors said that it led to a patient being hospitalized. Hmm. Being hospitalized is not the same thing as having a hospitalization approved. They had to be hospitalized because they couldn't get the care authorized by the Medicare Advantage plan. Doctors are saying this, not Chris Westfall. The vast majority, 91% of doctors said prior authorization led to notable delays in care. That's why I'm telling you the truth about this. 91% of doctors said this leads to delays in care. And this is what they're talking about introducing to original Medicare in this test program. And that's why I think it's important that you know about it. Yeah, it's only a demo. It's only a test. Maybe it'll fail. Maybe it won't. But anytime you take away something from somebody who's earned it their entire life, which is a senior who's been working maybe 30 years, all the credits necessary for original Medicare, and then you say to them, we're going to take that away and we're going to decide what you get treated for. This is an older study, 2018, from the wonderful Kaiser Family Foundation, who does a lot of great research in healthcare. And they found that these are the situations in which these Medicare Advantage plans are utilizing prior authorization, which means, again, the plan must say that you need that care. Look at hospital stays. How do you get prior authorization for an ambulance ride? I know you do it in a post-claim review and say, we wouldn't have authorized that if you'd called us. Interesting, huh? Procedures, labs, tests, only 61% of the time you're going to have the plan that's going to require prior authorization before that. If you've ever been through that before with managed care, you know it's a gigantic pain. And the, again, the doctors, you should listen to them when they're talking about how impactful this is on their practice, how much time they waste on prior authorization. And that's going to be part of this program. This is some interesting stuff that you literally can't find anywhere else. This is a study I found in the archives, archives from three months ago. And, and this is this is good news. This was good news to come out with and say, finally, finally, we've got a solution to this. But I kind of wondered, how is the Trump administration announcing a change to Medicare, Medicare Advantage, on prior authorization when he's already leaving office, right? So this story says CMS puts patients over paperwork, finally with a new rule that addresses the prior authorization process. Wonderful, here it comes. Here's the new rule. And the final rule will give providers access to patient, patient treatment history so they don't have to dig it up, streamlines prior authorization. And what this would do is create an API. That is, the, the computers at the health plan can talk to the doctor's computers, instantly get the information that they need without dragging out the process of receiving a fax and then asking questions and then sending the questions and then answering more questions. So this was going to solve it, right? The final rule today, quote, we take historic stride toward the future long promised by electronic health records, but never yet realized a more efficient, convenient and affordable health system. Here it comes. Seema. Days later, Seema resigned. She's gone. Okay, but this has already been passed as a rule, right? Well, notice this website address here. This, this address goes to the press room of CN, CMS, and I have an alert set on Google that anytime there's a new press release at CMS, I get an email. So I want to know what's going on with Medicare. This was there, but not anymore. This is gone. So this was the good news I was going to share with you today is that Finally, prior authorizations within Medicare Advantage has been solved. And yet, with this new program, that would be solved too. But unfortunately, no, it's not going to be solved because they literally deleted the press release, took it offline and said, no, we're not going to do that program. Thanks, but no thanks. Our lobbyists don't want it.
It costs too much money. Here it is. Biden administration appears to withdraw the final rule aimed at streamlining prior authorization. What happened there? They just withdraw it. Quote, CMS did not say that the withdrawal was due to the memo, the memo, and refused to comment on what other rules could be affected by the freeze. So here's, here's the distinction here. This DCE model was frozen too. Like a whole bunch of things were frozen. The Biden administration said they want to review everything. Anything, any rule change, especially last minute rule changes by the Trump administration, they wanted to put a pause on and look at everything. <clears throat> this was not paused. This was not frozen. This was eliminated. Not this program has been paused until we retool it. No, they just went back on this one. So we're back to the drawing board again on prior authorization. So back to this DCE program. And here's another indicator, just another indicator that this is all about Medicare Advantage land grab, right? At gunpoint, because you don't have a choice. So this program, the DCE program says, how are we going to measure the quality of what we're doing? How are we going to know if we're delivering the right care, if people are happy, if the blood pressure is coming down, if the diabetes screenings are doing good? How are we going to know that? Well, why don't we just implement this same exact tool that we do for Medicare Advantage? Hmm. How do you know if something's working or not? One, you're saving money. They'll know that versus the control group of people on original Medicare. So really the only factor that's changing here is the limitation on the network. You can still go to any other doctor, but they get to decide now the plan, this plan, this contracted entity, which is a private plan. And who's the private plan? A Medicare Advantage plan is going to be the contracted entity for this program. So what measurement, what yardstick are they going to use to see if they are doing it right? The Medicare Advantage star rating program. Nothing to see here, folks. So again, this is the distinction. CMS announced recently that they're pausing this program not stopping it. And this is coming back. My prediction, which is usually right. This is coming back. It's just part of the caught up in everything pause right now. This is not eliminated like the prior authorization integration was. This is gone. I'm sorry, this is paused. So here's something came out yesterday in the news just to keep you up to date. And remember, don't go anywhere because I want to save you money, which is what we're going to do in just a second. This bill was introduced and it looks good, sounds great. Uh, all of a sudden there's a recognition that the Medicare trust fund has been robbed too long. Initially robbed when the Affordable Care Act went into practice, went into place, shoring up really bad. Everybody recognizes this. Well, for the first time, they're maybe gonna do something about it. What are they gonna do? They're gonna study it. So this bill just introduced by Senator Mitt Romney and Joe Manchin. It's a bipartisan bill looking at the, did you know also that the uh, Social Security Trust Fund is slated to just run out of benefits in the future? It's not anticipated to be healthy, to be uh, fiscally responsible. No, if they just go with current law by the year 2032, 25% cuts will be coming to Social Security. That's in the law. Nobody talks about it but that's how they had to pass it initially way back when so that they wouldn't say that social security is going to go bankrupt, that this is a pyramid scheme. There's not enough people when the baby boomers are all retired. There's not enough earners out there that are going to be paying to support that. So they wrote it into the law that, Oh, we'll just reduce benefits way in the future when all of us are out of Congress. That's literally what they did. So this is establishing some research committees not to actually, this legislation doesn't actually shore up the Social Security and Medicare Trust Fund. No, it's going to study it. Rescue committees will be created and they'll have recommendations at least by June. Well, lati freaking da. Great, wonderful. Talk about how I can save you some money today. And I promise you, if you stay on the channel, keep apprised of what we're doing here, you will always have the latest with Medicare. If there's a little nugget on things on how you can bypass some bad things, and I, I've got some for 
any of my clients that come into this uh, this DCE program when it's launched again, which I, I do believe it's going to be, I encourage you to stay tuned to this channel and become our client. Let us help you with your Medicare insurance. We do Medicare Advantage when it's appropriate. We do Medicare supplements when it's appropriate. We do life insurance when people need it. We do long-term care when people need it. We just help our people to save money from where they are and to where they should have been and take care of them long after they're 65 years old. Can't tell you how many friends I have in the industry who will just write you a policy when you're 65 and then, hey, what happened to that agent that wrote my policy? I got a rate increase. What am I supposed to do with this rate increase? Sorry, they're gone. See ya. All I do is 65 year olds. We don't do that. When I started doing Medicare in 2008, and I focused on Medicare, my sole responsibility that I felt was, you know, coming out of law enforcement and helping people, I wanted to help seniors who were abandoned. They call them orphan clients. Why? Because their agents are gone. They're nowhere to be found because they just wanted that 65 year old, no health questions, open enrollment, sign them up and they're gone. So maybe 10,000 of those people we've helped over the years that have had a plan, they're paying too much, they don't know what to do, they don't know where to go, and yet every year their premium goes up. Well, they need an advocate, that's what we do, and it doesn't cost a thing. So if you know anybody like that, that's paying too much, hasn't reviewed their plan in like two years, they need to get on the phone or get on our website and schedule an appointment with us. So here's how you can save money just as a normal person. Doesn't matter if you're an insurance agent, friend of mine watching this, anybody else. This, uh, these are some examples of how I've saved money with this program. And I'm going to show you actually how it works. The program's called Get Upside. You may have heard about it on the television or the radio lately. But I tested it out before bringing it to you. And literally, I'm saving money. So I put a little shortcut to it. This is an affiliate link. I'll save a penny on my gas if you sign up for the thing to save uh, 25 cents or more. Every gallon of gas that you get, if you buy gas, you should have this program. Now, it does take a smartphone, Android phone or iPhone. If you have one of those smartphones, that's all you need. The whole program's free. It'll literally put money right back in your bank account. It's legitimate. I checked it out. So on this day, I made $14.55. This day on this fill-up, I made $5.38, $3, $1.63. And this $1.63, I can tell you, was just topping off. That was just uh, today, yesterday. Um, but here's how the program works. On their app, and I'll show you how it works here, you find a local gas station, and they're also adding restaurants, which is nice too. Get money back on things you're already doing. So you find a local gas station on their app, and it automatically knows where you are when you run the app, only when you run the app. It's not stalking you all day. But when you run the app, it'll pull up your area and all of the places you can save money near you. Very easy. So then you go to one of the places, and if it has this blue checkbox on it, which I'll show you, then all you have to do is pump gas and leave. That's it. And you tell it what your credit card number is, but not all your credit card number. They can't use your credit card number. It's like the, and it's a little bit, you have to pay attention to it really carefully. It's like the first four digits of your credit card and the last three digits. It's one of those weird number schemes. It's just enough that they know that you were there and you bought gas. They don't get your whole credit card or your expiration date of your zip. They don't get all that stuff. Just enough to know that you literally bought gas so they can give you money back on it. So you find a place. Now, if there's no blue badge like this on the screen, which I'll show you what that means, then no problem. You can scan your receipt. I did this. This is really interesting. So I went to a place in Florida when we were in Florida, got gas, and I got a receipt printed out of the pump because it said this place does not participate in the electronic thing or whatever. You need to take a picture of the receipt. No problem. It printed out the receipt. I held it in my hand and the app said, push this button to take a picture. I took a picture of the receipt and it scanned it and it, it could tell and it shows you how many gallons you got, what the purchase price was and all that. And it said, bingo, this confirms. Thank you. Your money's in your account. Just that fast. It's so neat. So if it's got a blue badge at the place, and you've got your credit card number, half of the number in the system, all you do is you use your credit card at that place. You have to claim the offer. So they have to know that you're there. But if not, you just scan the receipt right in their app. It's so easy. And they just put money in your account, either a credit card or a debit card, just not cash. That way they can track the fact that you get it. So here's what it looks like. I just took this a couple hours ago here in my office. This is what I'm sitting next to. I can go over to Shell 
and pay $3.17 for premium gas there because it asks you what kind of gas you have to have. You can get any kind of gas. It's just showing what I want to see. So I'm, I'm saving 25 cents a gallon here, and it's got the, the blue indicator. So all I have to do is show up, push the button that I'm here, and all you do that is click the button. Or I could go to Spinks and pay less, or I can go to the 76 store, but on these I'd have to scan the receipt. Not a big deal. So this is what the app looks like. I backed out a little bit. When you bring it up on your phone, it shows you the locations near you. And again, you'll see the little blue thing down there. And the blue, let me make the screen bigger so you can see it. And the blue thing just indicates it's all automatic. This is so neat to save money. I heard that somebody was saving $200 a week, a person that drives for a living, probably like an Uber, Lyft, something like that. This is the second page of the same app. I just scrolled down and you can see all these different places. So if I'm going to go to the Shell station right here, it's got the blue indicator, real easy for me. I click on claim and then it says, okay, you've got, I think it's four hours to uh, go there, pump your gas. And if they match on the electronic records that you did the gas while you were at this place, boom, my price per gallon went from 342 down to 317. Now, if you look at the top of the app at any time, it'll tell you what your current account balance is in there in real time. And let me show you how you get your money from it. It's real easy. So this is, um, oh, this is a zoom in on the local station that's right around the corner here, what it looks like. Let's see, you checked in. Once you've made your purchase, we verify it. See there, and you get your cash back. So there's another one. And this is another one that I used in uh, Land Lakes, Florida last week. I just took a picture of it. So here I was saving 13 cents a gallon. Here I would have saved 25 if I got mid-grade. And you can see right on the screen what you're going to, yeah, it's four hours that you get. And here's what you can do with the money. Again, right now, my balance, this is just now, $4.63. I can either get a gift card to any of these places, Lowe's, whatever, or I can get cash. I like cash. I tend to like cash better than anything else. So the last time I pulled out cash was, uh, what was this, a week ago, two weeks ago, and it said that my balance was $19.93, so I told it, send it to my PayPal, so it'll go right into my bank account, and they did. And this is the verification from my PayPal page from today. I pulled this activity up, and it shows that I got the money in my account. So if you're going to get gas anyway, you might as well get paid for getting gas anyway. And this is a nice, especially with gas, gas prices going up. And you can get the link to it at seniorsavingsnetwork.org forward slash gas. What it does when you go here, seniorsavingsnetwork.org forward slash gas. When you go there, it'll say, what's your phone number? And that's for the sole purpose of they'll send you a text message. And all you do is you click on the button. So you don't have to go to an app store or the Apple store and look for an app. You don't have to do all that. You simply go to this link and put in your phone number and it will text you the link to download the app for your phone. Real easy. And then you tell it whichever credit card, you can put one credit card in there, you can put five in there, it doesn't matter. But again, you're not giving up all your personal information. You're not putting your entire credit card number in there. It's just like the last four digits or whatever. So we help seniors save money. That's why I'm in business. That's why we have our company. That's what we do every day all day across the country. Whether you're confused about your Medicare options coming up, you have a decision to make, or you're already on Medicare and you think you're on the wrong plan, that's what we do. We can help you. We also have this uh, secure form on our website. If we're not here after five o'clock or six o'clock at night and you can't get us on the phone right away, we have a very secure form. I make sure that it's encrypted, completely secure. You can tell us what your situation is. Then we can go do the research in your specific case based on your zip code because all plans are local and we can get right back to you on what the potential solution is. So if we can help you, please go there and let us help you. And that's all I have. That's what's going on in Medicare. I believe that this program, if you have a question, by the way, you want to talk about something, put it in the comments or wherever you're watching this. Uh, this is being streamed right now to LinkedIn, Twitter, Periscope, which is now Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. So we have a lot of people watching right now. And if you have questions, you want to talk about something, just go to the comments where you are right now. And I'll see that. And I'll try to pull out a couple and answer some questions. So the program that I talked about, this DCE model is proposed still. It's just on pause. I do believe it's coming back. And when and if it does, you'll be hearing about it here first. Also the prior authorization thing. Look, I get it. Some people are on Medicare Advantage. They can't get off of it. They're stuck there. For some people, it's the best plan possible for them. Like I said, we help people with Medicare Advantage. But I guarantee you one thing, 
We're going to put them on the best possible plan that fits their needs the most appropriately rather than one that, like some folks do, will pay the most bonus for this program or that program or this launch or that or an incentive here or there. We want to ask enough questions to know that we're making a solid recommendation based on your budget, your health, your outlook for where you think your health will be in the future, your local area and what's available there. That makes a big difference. So anyway, that's what we do to help. And I'm going to look at the questions here and see if we can pull some of them in. Let's see. John, you know what? I should probably read a little bit longer to see if I'm putting anything bad in the uh, in the stream here. John says, do not buy, get in a Medicare Advantage, but buy a supplement, Advantage plans or garbage. HMO. John, you know, there's enough people with experience here. You don't have to tell all of your experience. No, I'm just kidding. I see this all the time. If you've not yet done so, I encourage you, look at some of our videos. We have 3.9 million views now. Look at some of the videos that are on here and see the experiences of medical professionals, nurses and doctors, billing specialists, people who work in the industry all day, and seniors who have life experience like John's talking about right here, and they share that in the comments. I encourage you to share your situation, share your story. Don't give personal information like, we don't need to know what you, drugs you're taking and what your zip code, you know, no personal information, but you can engage in the comments. It's really interesting to see what people have gone through and what experience they're willing to share with others, like John's doing right here to try to help somebody. Um, see, right there, I just eliminated a couple of curse words that I would, I would not want to make public. My mom would not be proud of me if I did that. Um, you are blank straight. Don't touch my Medicare. It took me 65 years to get here and years of taxes to earn this right. Unless your plan is to make it better, leave it the heck alone. Good deal. Medicare don't care. Um, this is a good one. Karen, you said, can they pull you out of Medigap plans for this? That's a good question. And I don't know the answer. Because when you go back to the criteria in their briefing, it said, people who are using original Medicare and I searched the entire document on this. They have a huge PDF and all the articles and the uh, PowerPoint that came with the webinar. And nowhere in there is Medigap mentioned or is a supplement mentioned. So that's a really good question, Karen, that I don't have the answer to. I can speculate and say yes, because they're already, uh, you're on original Medicare, fee-for-service Medicare. But that's very, very interesting. Um, we have some political commentary that I'll just keep out because any mention of anybody's name makes everybody mad. Uh, Chris covered the pilot states earlier. I can bring that back up. Uh, let's see. Was it about slide number 10? Oh, I'll get it. Right here. Atlanta, Dallas, Houston, Los Angeles, Miami, Orlando, Philadelphia, Phoenix, San Diego, and Tampa. That's where it's proposed to go. Um, this was started by Trump. It was a test model. There is a whole center within CMS that's all about testing new programs. And yes, this started under the Trump administration, but I think you're going to see it implemented under the Biden administration. There we go. Look at that, Dwayne. Fax technology was created in 1843, Alexander Bain. Thank you, Dwayne. 1843 technology these insurance companies are still using in the private world to try to deny care or get information so they can make a judgment on care. Let's be fair. But they want to use an old scanned fax machine instead of tying in systems together. Wow. Um, Twin Sparrow, that's a neat name. We heard this year that Advantage Care is not good from somebody who's in the insurance business. Go to a um, website that I have is a purely educational thing called allaboutmedicareadvantage.com. We help people with Medicare Advantage. Sometimes it's the most appropriate and best place for them to be. However, you need to have eyes wide open going in there. One thing you won't hear from me is, here, just sign here. It's, it's free. It's free, free, free. And you'll see many people, many people on television. Mr. Uh, Joe Namath, thank you so much for all the, oh my gosh. Um, I'm telling you what, get the benefits that you deserve could not be more of a freaking lie. Oh my gosh. And then telling people you're going to get all your part B premiums back. No, you're not. If you're in one specific type of plan and you're one type of income, it, oh my gosh, it's so misleading. 
I'm so glad my filter is in full effect today. Um, Jody says, congrats for getting kicked out of AERP. Thank you. We've replaced thousands of policies um, in the past. Wow. Um, and, and you said, Richard, AMAC, you should do a search on my channel for AMAC because we got a we got a, uh, a solicitation trying to get us to go work for AMAC. AMAC is an insurance agency. Um, you can call it a senior advocacy group if you want to, but it's an insurance agency. It was created for the sole benefit of selling insurance to seniors. And we actually do more production in here than they do, but it's an insurance agency. Just, just to let you know behind the scenes, because they're still recruiting agents. Um, let's see one more in here. Do, 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 do. I found that AERP costs more than other ins senior insurance. Sometimes it's all local. It's all local. And we hear many times from people when they're turning 65, they'll be like, you know what? I'm a part of this organization or that, and I should get a discount. So tell me what that is. Like, wait a minute. No, we're an independent brokerage here. I'll tell you what the rate is, but it's way down the line. It's like number 13 or 26 or 50 down the line of who's got the best value for a Medigap plan. Some areas, good. Many areas, not so good, but it takes an independent agent, which is we could we could sell any of them. We could sell any of them at all, but we want to look at what's best for you in your area. And um, yeah, you found that they were high and that is not uncommon. Let's see. Thank you for the offer. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and if you missed that one, oh, please hit the notification bell and subscribe if you hadn't already and hit that thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I'm going to leave that link on here for people who didn't see it because it's free money. It doesn't cost anything. That's what we do. We try to save people money. And this is a good program. It's seniorsavingsnetwork.org forward slash gas. If they can put it in the account with partial numbers, to talk about the gas thing, then they can take it out. Sounds like a scam. I hate to say, mark my words. Well, I was an investigator with the sheriff's office and a Florida certified crime prevention practitioner. And I can tell you that I researched the absolute heck out of this. I know who the company is. I know who the principals are. I know the relationship with the credit card companies and how they wouldn't even be able to send money through PayPal if this was a scam. Oh, and by the way, I did get my money and they can't take money from your credit card if they don't have all the digits. And again, they don't take all the digits. So they don't give money back on your credit card. They give you money in cash, actual cash. It's legitimate. I checked it so you didn't have to. Just like buying insurance. I checked it, got the licenses in all the states across the country. So you don't have to. Kind of what I do. Um, Biden is Medicare for all. Biden does not